Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to take a serverless API and attach that to a Mongo database. In this video, we're going to take the previous serverless API that we wrote and modify it so that we can talk to a database still serverless and all in the cloud. All right, let's get to it. First thing we want to do is install Mongo. So let's do npm install Mongo db. And that'll go ahead and install that for us. And now we can start working on the database connection. So we're going to create a new folder here and we're going to call it lib. And inside that lib, we're going to create a new file called database.js. Now in here, this is where we're going to handle all of the connections, which might seem a bit of an overkill, but this is going to show you how to create a nice simple API that you can extend out to do more things. So the first thing we want to do is to get the Mongo client in from MongoDB. So to do that, we're going to do a const. I'm going to call it Mongo client. And then we're going to require and we need MongoDB. And then we're going to do a period here and then the Mongo client. And this will just get the Mongo client. We don't need the full thing. We just need this one piece of the puzzle. And then I'm going to create a let here that's called cached db. And we're going to set this to null. And what we can do with this is that we can use this to basically handle connections. So instead of constantly requesting new connections, we can actually just say, hey, if there's already a connection for this, then go ahead and use it. Otherwise, you can create a new connection. So now we're going to make our connect to database function, which is going to be async because we don't want this to return until it's done. And we're going to say if cache db, then we're just going to re immediately just return a new um, connection that's already been previously used, right? So we're not going to need a new connection. We're just going to go ahead and say use existing connection and then return a promise that's resolved and that's going to be that cached DB. So let's just go over this one more time real quick. Let's just go ahead and hit save. We saved it and it looks nice and neat. So what's happening here is basically I'm saying, hey, if there's already this cache connection up here, don't make another connection to the database. I don't need hundreds and hundreds of connections. And, you know, if you wanted to extend this, you could put um, the number of connections and then say if it's cached and the number of connections is, you know, less than five, I'm actually going to do a new connection. Otherwise, use the cached one. And that basically gives you the option to pull um, everything. So now we've done this if, and we've basically said, if it's cached, do that. Else, what we're going to do now, uh, right here, we're going to add an else. We're going to just return the Mongo client dot connect. And then we're going to need a MongoDB URI. So we don't have one right now. But what we're going to do is I'm just going to put a process.m in here and we'll call it MongoDB URI. And that is basically going to take our connection from our environment versus using um, an insecure way. Like I could paste in a connection here and then you would be able to see my passwords and username, etc. So you're going to use your own and I'm going to throw an example in here so that you have it. Um, but just bear in mind that this connection is going to work because I have it in my environments. So then what we need to do is we need to tell that we're using the native parser and we're going to set that to true. And then we're also going to say used unified topology and also set that to true. Now this is sort of new things from Mongo. Um, and I assume that you know um, how Mongo works. Basically, this 
is using the C++ parser, and then this is just enables the new unified topology layer that they introduced in a recent version of Mongo. So we're going to set those, and at this point, now we're ready to actually do something. So now we're going to chain a few thens together, and we're going to do a few things in there, and basically we're going to say, hey, connect to this database, and then set the cache DB to that database, and then the last part will be we need to catch an error if there's something wrong. So we do a then, and then what we're going to do is pass in the client, and then we're going to do some stuff. So I haven't really described what the client is, but I'll show that on the other side when we get to it, and it'll all make sense. But just assume the client is the request that we're making to make this new connection. So imagine if um, we, we want to make this connection and we're not ready to go, like this is all part of that. So it will make more sense in a second when we start chaining a bit more of this together. So now we're going to say let db equal to the client, so now we're using the client, and we're going to say db and then database name. So for you that would be your database name and we'll uh, talk about that in a second and then we'll just put a console here that says new database connection. And then what we'll do because we're smart people here, we'll set the cached DB to this DB. And then we'll return the cached DB. So this basically says, this makes the client and makes the connection. Then we say, hey, use this client and connect to this database name and just say, we have definitely made a connection then we can set this to this cache DB and then finally return that cache DB. And then we want to add a catch. And the catch is important, right? So all we're going to do in here is say there's an error. Then we need to do something. And what we're basically going to say is the very basic error. And then actually we'll just add a line in front of that. Before we dump out the error, we'll just say mongo connection error all right so this is our full database file and it's what it does we'll just go through it one more time we make a if statement if it's cached we'll just go ahead and return that cache db else we're going to head and return this which will return the connection and then what we'll do is we'll connect to the database of our choice so at this point, we're actually ready for us to modify our user connection to do some stuff. But first, let me just show you what the environmental uh, piece should look like in your code. So let's just go ahead and create a new file and we'll call it .env.example. And this will be committed to our GitHub code so you'll be able to use it yourself. And here it is. So it's the MongoDB URI and it equals mongodb plus username and password and then the URL to your database. Now if you're using a local one that's fairly simple, it's like 127.0.0 etc. Um, if you're using Mongo Cloud from Atlas, they can just give you that and you can go ahead and paste this in. So at this point, we are ready to make some changes to our users. And just to verify, what will happen is we'll actually load this in here and say, hey, that's the URI, and then we'll connect to the database of choice. Um, so now we're ready to move on. So inside our users, we're going to have to make some serious changes to make this all work. So the first thing we want to do is we want to import connect to database and that was from that lib file so 
So we want to make sure that we import what we just did. Otherwise, it was totally pointless writing all that code, right? So now we have this get, and it just basically returns right now a static return every time. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to do some connections. So let's delete this code out and say const db equals await. So this basically says wait until something comes back from this connect database, which is our code that we wrote previously. Then we're going to do a collection and that is going to be the collection from Mongo. So we're going to call this users because that makes the most sense. And finally, we're going to, at this point, what we have is a database connection to a specific table is the way you can imagine it. So at this point, now what we want to do is say, can you give me all of the users in the database, please? And then Mongo will return those and we can say, yes, thank you so much. Let me take that and do something with it. So at this point, we can make another const and we'll call it users and we'll await the collection and then the find command to array and that's it. So what happens here is we say, hey, this co collection, aka this table, go ahead and find anything and put it to an array. So this will find, this is basically, if you've used SQL, a select star from the user's database. So now at this point, we can actually just respond and say response status 200.json users. And this will say, hey, if this all goes well, we'll just respond with a 200 and we'll put the users in there. Now we're not doing any kind of error checking in this example because I want to keep it as simple as possible. So at this point, we should be ready to go and test this using Postman. So let's go ahead and test it. Okay, so we're ready to go here. We've got all our stuff. So to begin with, let's go ahead and launch our development. So you just type Brazil and then dev. All right, so now we're ready on localhost 3000. And what I did was I did load up the database with a few examples so that we could test this out. But what you can do is do that yourself using the web client from Mongo, or you could just wait until we do our post and post a few and then make sure that your get works. But my advice is go ahead and make sure that you've done it in the uh, Mongo side so that you're ready to go. So we got Postman open again and it's localhost 3000 slash API slash users. And when we hit send, it says new database connection and we get our users returned. And we can try another send and it makes another connection and so on and so forth. So it's good, right? So now we actually have a connection, but what should we do if we want to actually insert a new user into our database. Well, the insert part is just as easy as the get part. So now what we're going to do is we're going to write an else if the request method is actually a post, then we want to do something with that, right? So we're going to connect to the database again and say, please give me a connection. And we also want to collect to that connection, right? So we want to be on the same collection as we were previously, and that was called users. So at the, say, at the moment, you can see that we've pretty much got the exact same code again. And the only difference is going to be this part right here. So we're going to write users, and we're going to ask it to await oh, again, collection dot insert one new user. Now, of course, the most important part of this is we need one more up here, a const that says new user, and we're going to take the request body and insert that into our database. 
And then once we've done that, we want a response back that says response stats is 200.json and users to make sure that we actually did insert the user. So at this point, we've got a request body that says, can I have a new user? The database connection that is exactly the same as before. And then just to make sure what we'll do is we'll just run one more and we'll call it the else statement that says 404, which was in our previous example. And we'll set the status to error route not found. And this will be for any other routes than the ones that we have. So at this point, we should be ready to insert a new user to the database. So let's try that out. So we'll change this to post and we'll say API users. And then we'll go ahead and we've got the example here, name Stephen, location London. But let's just change this up and we'll say George. And George lives in New Jersey. New Jersey, which was in our previous example. And now if we hit send, we made a new database connection and we got something back. And here we can see insert account is one, which means that we successfully inserted something. And we can actually see that George is right here. He's been inserted and here's his new ID. So if we make a get request now, there he is, George from New Jersey. So there we go, guys. We created a completely serverless API that connects to a Mongo database that can get users and also add new users to that database. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to leave it a like. If you want to see more content from me in the future, make sure you subscribe. And finally, click that notification bell to get notified every time I upload a new video. Until next time, see ya!